Hello, this is Matt Pullen, and I'm going to be vlogging about uh, the Corona SDK, uh, specifically about possibilities for gesture recognition. So, Corona SDK is a fairly new and growing platform for developing apps, apps for mobile devices, be they Android or uh, Apple operating systems. So, you use this uh, use this SDK, and you can code your apps and then build them, you know, any, either, uh, either platform that you wish. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very pleasant experience so far. I've become a subscriber to Corona SDK and I'm exploring it. And this video is just to show, you know, show off my Hello World program and uh, talk about some things that I've learned in uh, working with Corona SDK. So, so let's start my Hello World program. Um, I'll just, it prints Hello World, a green background, and I also print out some things to the console here. Um, the coordinates of uh, the display object is uh, you know, zero, 00. The uh, width and height of the display area, 320 by 480 in the case of the uh, iPhone here. A uh, warning about simulator does not ex support accelerometer events. That's because I have a uh, my Lua code here. Corona apps are written in Lua, a programming language that I've not used before. And uh, I'm gonna assume that you know if you're viewing this, you have some you've uh, you've tried the Corona SDK and you have some knowledge of uh, you know of Lua and how programs are laid out. Uh, well, I'm, since I I'm like still on my Hello World program. I don't have a whole lot of knowledge myself, but you know, maybe if you were new like me, you will pick up some things. Um, so I have all these event listeners. I'm calling them on runtime. It is not a specific object. I'm just calling the event listeners on runtime. And uh, say one of the event listeners I have here is accelerometer. So I'm picking up the accelerometer events, and the function that I'm uh, calling is interface events dot accelerometer. Well, what is interface events? Interface events is a local variable I declared in my main program that is a the result of a require. So it's a, it's a module, a module called interface events dot Lua, which I have in the same folder as my uh, main dot Lua. So this module, which at the very top we use module you know, dot 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 package dot see all, and this module has a bunch, bunch of functions that I'm using, you know, just inside this interface events module. That, you know, because I because they are global functions, the uh, main program has access to them. So interface events dot accelerometer is the function accelerometer in my module here. The only accelerometer event I'm concerned about is shaking since it's the only one I can pick up in the simulator anyway. So if event.isShake, then run this loop that, uh, well, basically it's just for i equals 1, 100, 1, uh, do print period. So it prints a column of 100 periods. So demonstrates that I can detect shake, and also it helps me clear out my console there. So shake, I get 100 periods. So, um, so that's the accelerometer. I'm also trapping for system events. So add listener uh, system, and then the function is uh, interface events dot system event. Inside interface events, we got system event where I'm simply um, I'm simply spitting out the event dot type of the system event. So so we do suspend. We see system event application suspend. We do resume. If I do relaunch, then we see application start. So, um, you know, other other event listeners that I'm calling are uh, key, which is the direction keys. In case of, uh, you know, some Android phones have uh, D-pad, up, down, left, right, enter, and I'm eventually going to be able to leverage these in the direction key function, although there's no way for me to emulate it yeah, because I, um, I don't have an Android phone, I just have a Windows uh, simulator. So 
I hope eventually there will be a way to emulate that on the simulator, the direction keys. But for now, I just have to, you know, sort of, sort of, uh, sort of believe that this is one day going to work. Um, and then screen touch, which handles, you know, the taps and touches on my screen area. So tap and touch, they both, uh, two different event names, they both get called the same function, screen touch. And we split them out here. If event.name equals touch, then you know, do all this stuff. And if it's tap, then do this. Just print out uh, print out tap and then the location of the tap. The location of the tap is event.x and event.y. In the case of touch, a touch has three parts. A began, a moved, and an ended. So we print out touch, whatever phase it is, and then the origin, that is where, where the finger got put down, and then where the finger is now shows up as event.x and event.y. Whereas where the finger began shows up as event.x start and event.y start. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to talk a little bit about some ideas I have for gesture recognition in your uh, Corona apps. Uh, it's sort of hinted in the documentation that there will one day be more, uh, you know, more straightforward uh, functions for us to detect gestures. But for now, we just sort of have to like play around with uh, play around with what's there, like the, the touch events. And I'm going to show you in this video how you can uh, code your own gesture. So that will be the goal. But I'm just going to talk about uh, a few other things in my Hello World program. So all these all this stuff, the black background, uh, inner background text, they all get dumped into a sample group, group sample group equals display.new group, and then dump all these things in. Obviously in the background first, because uh, you know, you're know you inserting things into a group, the things at the back go in first, and the things at the front go in last. And uh, so we print out the coordinates of the sample group, which is 0, 0. And if we use this, transition.2, really cool function. So what this does is uh, you pass it the sample group, and then a... Uh, a table here, time equals 2,000, which is about two seconds, and then uh, y equals group underscore sample group dot y plus 300, that is the current y of sample group, plus 300 pixels. So what, what do you think this line does here? Um, let's find out. We comment it back in, relaunch, all by itself, just that one line, and over a time period of two seconds, it goes to uh, 300, 300 pixels below where it started. What I find interesting is this transition survives uh, suspend, like relaunch, suspend. So now that the app is suspended, but when I resume, it keeps going to its point. So that is potentially a very useful function, which is worth taking note of. So. Um, so let's talk about screen touch. Relaunch it. Shake it. So um, if I touch and then I drag, you see touch began at 88, 197, and touch moved a whole bunch of times to a whole bunch of places, and then touch ended at 112, 197. This is the life cycle of a touch. It begins, it moves, and it ends. So if I hold down and drag, you see it's moving a whole bunch of times. If I drag over here, it's going you know, negative numbers outside of the display area, which obviously on a uh, real mobile device this would not ever happen. And then it ends. Even if, even if I release outside, it still ends. So, uh, so yeah, oh, and if I, if I just click and I let go, then it taps. Any, anytime you press, it registers a touch. But if you release your finger without ever having moved it, then it qualifies as a tap. So every, every touch is a touch, but some touches are taps as well. So you can, like, I don't know, you could, like, detect a double tap fairly easily. So, uh, you know, let's get into... Uh, this uh, interface events.lua, this module here, 
So is, is handling, the strategy is interface events is going to handle all of my, um, you know, interface, uh, interface thing, things, you know, my environment events like screen touch, direction key, accelerometer. And it's going to handle all those and then uh, communicate back to the main program, you know, what, what, kinds of, uh, what kinds of things happen, what the main program should, what actions the main program should be taking. And how the module communicates back to the main program is it uses, uh, you know, a, a global function. I define the global function in my main program called global fun. And what it does is it does text underscore my text, you know, sets the text to whatever the string is that was passed in. And it also prints out global fun, concatenates with string. Now, I could have just done a print inside of my module, but then it wouldn't have access to the uh, text that underscore my text. So although they teach in you know, the documentation that having global functions in your main program is not the best thing, I think, uh, I think the system seems to, uh, it seems to be working pretty, you know, pretty well for me so far. And, you know, eventually, uh, you know, this is the way. This is the way to communicate back from your module to your main program. Since I want to do all the, you know, all the heavy lifting here, you know, dealing with x, y coordinates, and then pass out, you know, events, sort of my own events, in in the form of calling a global function. So, uh, so say we put this, put these lines back in. So whenever the event dot phase equals began. We uh, call global fun with a shocked face, and whenever it is ended, we call it with a, uh, a neutral face. And just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to comment this this line that prints out everything related to the touch. I'm just going to comment that out for now, so everything else is easier to see. We'll relaunch, shake, and then see. I'm holding on the mouse. It's the shocked face. When I release, it's the neutral face. Isn't that fun? Oh, and some of them, you see a tap. I didn't, uh, I didn't comment out the line for tap, so sometimes when I, when I don't move, you see tap as well. So all this is well and fun, but it's not really gesture recognition. Um, let's talk about some gesture recognition here. So uh, our sample uh, gesture recognition is going to be you know, we want we want to see when the user moves their finger to the right and then back to the left. It's going to be our uh, it's going to be sort of a, a ping pong action. So we're going to we're going to make a variable, a local variable, to interface events dot Lua local number uh, ping pong, and we're going to start it out being equal to zero. And when it begins, we do, uh, see, when it begins, we want n ping pong to be 0. And when it ends, we'll also, we'll also have ping pong be 0. Now, when it moves, this is where, uh, this is where we, you know, put a uh, whole bunch of logic. Uh, so, if and ping pong is still zero. And ping pong is zero. And event dot x start. That is the location where uh, the finger touched is less than event dot x minus one hundred. Then, so basically, what this says is if the current location of x is a hundred or more characters or 100 or more pixels, rather, to the right of event.x start, then, and the uh, n ping pong is still equal to zero, then you want to do n ping pong is equal to one. That is, the, if we're at the right, uh, the right point of our uh, gesture. So we want to keep track of that, set that flag to one, and we want to print, oh, let's just print, uh, Ping. And then we'll um, we'll also uh, we'll also call global fun to change our text. So we'll uh, do it as a uh, uh, 
uh, frowny face when it's at the right part. And then uh, else if. So that's one case where it's zero and it gets to the right part of the gesture. So now, what if, what if it's, we do, uh, and, whoops, and ping pong, what if it's equal to one? Well, if, and ping pong is equal to one, and, see, what happens, we, we want to track when it, with when the finger moves to the left of where the finger originally was. So, and event.x is less than event.x start. Then, uh, let's see. Well, then we want to set n ping pong is equal to 2, something different. And then we want to print pong. And then we want to do global fun. We want to make it a smiley face. And end. So I'll save that. See what we got here. Relaunch. Shake. So we got our shock face now as you move to the right. That we uh, we called global fun sad face. So the face on the screen changed to sad, and then we see pin. So now we go back to the left. Uh oh. Attempt to call global print a nil value. What happened here? Line 18. Um, oh, calling print. Oh, that must probably print is what I wanted. So, run a project. So, so I drag to the right, I get ping, and I release, so it goes to neutral face. Now I'm dragging left and right, nothing happens. So, drag to the right, ping, drag to the left, pong, and etc. And nothing else is going to happen since uh, and ping pong is now 2, and none of those cases that we programmed look for 2. So, when we drag to the right, we got uh, ping, and when we drag to the left, we get pong. Now, wouldn't it be fun if instead of going to 2, we went to uh, uh, 0? So this way, relaunch, shake. See this way, we can go back and forth. So we've determined uh, we've determined our gesture. We've now looked for you know going right and then back left again. We can even just for fun, we can even make a uh, local n score equal zero. And score equals zero, uh, zero. And then whenever it goes uh, pong, we do n score um, plus. Do we have plus plus in Lua? I don't know. I'm going to do n uh, score plus one just to be safe. So now, oh, and then. Uh, for global fun, instead of printing out the neutral face, we're going to print out uh, n score. Relaunch. So, so we do our gesture thingy here, and when we release, we find out that we uh, we went back and forth nine times. And we did it one time, zero. So I, ho I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of possibilities for uh, gesture recognition in uh, Corona applications.